Powdery mildew is a common fungal disease that affects a wide range of plants. It's characterized by white or gray powdery spots that appear on the leaves and stems of plants. If left untreated, it can cause significant damage to the plant, including yellowing leaves, leaf drop, and diminished bloom and fruit production. While many plants can be affected by powdery mildew, some are more susceptible than others. These include cucurbits, such as squash, pumpkins, cucumbers, melons, roses, apples and pears, grapes, peas, strawberries, tomatoes, zinnias, phlox, dahlias, sunflowers, begonias, oak trees, lilacs, powdery mildew treatment. Although most products on the market are targeted more toward the prevention of powdery mildew, there are many home remedies to treat an existing infection. Spray mixtures will only kill what they come in contact with, so be sure to coat all affected areas thoroughly. It may take multiple applications for complete treatment. Apply once a week for three to four weeks, then wait to see results. Reapply as needed. Baking soda solution. Mix one tablespoon baking soda and one half teaspoon liquid soap such as Castile soap, not detergent, in one gallon of water. Spray liberally, getting top and bottom leaf surfaces and any affected areas. This method may work better as a preventative measure, although it does have some effect on existing powdery mildew as well. Potassium bicarbonate. Mix one tablespoon potassium bicarbonate and one half teaspoon liquid soap, not detergent, in one gallon of water. Spray liberally to all affected areas. This mixture may work better than baking soda as a treatment for existing infections. Milk. Mix one part milk to two to three parts water and spray liberally. While the science behind this solution isn't fully understood, it seems to work rather well, especially on zucchini, melons and cucumbers. It is believed that naturally occurring compounds in the milk not only combat the disease, but also boost the plant's immune system. Neem oil. By itself, neem oil has mixed reviews on its effectiveness to treat powdery mildew, but it can be added to the above mixtures for an extra boost. Powdery mildew fungicide. Use sulfur-containing organic fungicides as both preventive and treatment for existing infections. Trim or prune. Remove the affected leaves, stems, buds, fruit or vegetables from the plant and discard. Some perennials can be cut down to the ground and new growth will emerge. Do not compost any damaged or diseased foliage as the spores can spread and persist in the composted material. Disinfect pruners and all tools after using on infected plants. Prevention of powdery mildew. Proper spacing. Crowded plants with poor air circulation are particularly susceptible to powdery mildew. This is because the fungus thrives in a still, humid environment. By ensuring that your plants are well spaced, you're enabling better air circulation, which can help to reduce humidity levels around the plants. Sunlight. Powdery mildew doesn't fare well under direct sunlight. The ultraviolet, UV, rays can inhibit the growth of the fungus. Therefore, if possible, plant susceptible plants in locations where they'll receive plenty of sunlight. However, remember that different plants have different sunlight requirements, so you should still make sure that you're giving your plants the right amount of light for their species. Watering. The way you water your plants can have a significant impact on powdery mildew. The fungus prefers damp, humid environments, so if you're watering your plants from above and wetting the leaves, you're creating an ideal environment for the fungus to thrive. Instead, water the plants at the base so that the soil is the only part of the plant that gets wet. Also, watering early in the day gives plants ample time to dry out, thus reducing the risk. Resistant varieties. If powdery mildew is a persistent issue in your garden, it might be worth investing in resistant varieties. These plants have been bred to be less susceptible to the fungus, and they can save you a lot of time and hassle in the long run. Regular monitoring. Regularly inspect your plants for early signs of powdery mildew. This includes white or gray powdery spots on leaves, stems, and fruit. The earlier you catch it, the easier it will be to manage, and the less damage it will do to your plants. 
Fungicides. Various fungicides can help control powdery mildew. These are chemicals that can kill the fungus and prevent it from spreading. Organic options include sulfur, lime sulfur, neem oil, and potassium bicarbonate. Synthetic options include microbutanol, propiconazole, and tabucon azole, among others. Biological control. Biological control methods utilize other organisms to control the disease. Certain bacteria, such as Bacillus subtilis, can be used to combat powdery mildew. These beneficial bacteria compete with the fungus for space and resources, effectively suppressing its growth. Home remedies. There are a number of home remedies that have been reported to help with powdery mildew. One such remedy is a solution of baking soda, mild dish soap, and water. The baking soda makes the leaf surface less acidic and therefore less hospitable to the fungus. The dish soap helps the solution stick to the leaves. Crop rotation and removal of infected plants. This is an important strategy for powdery mildew prevention and control. By rotating crops and promptly removing and disposing of infected plants, you can prevent the buildup of fungal spores in the soil and on plant surfaces, reducing the risk of new infections. Remember that a multi-pronged approach is often the most effective way to prevent and control powdery mildew. A combination of cultural practices, chemical controls, and biological controls can help keep your garden healthy and vibrant. That's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe to the How to Academy channel to gain more knowledge about gardening and disease remedies.